it is actually my proud privilege to be uh, a facilitator for this fireside chat session with none other than Dr. Vimal Someshwar. He is a stalwart in interventional radiology and a renowned name not just in India but across the globe. I, for like many other interventional radiologists, has been interventional radiating this for young as like twenty years. Uh, it is a uh, we are we are very thankful to you sir for taking out the time today and uh, actually letting us know and others uh, uh, how, what exactly is prostatic artery embolization and how this uh, this whole thing would be. So without further ado, I would request Dr. Vimal Someshwar to kindly start with the proceedings and tell us what exactly is a prostate gland and then take it further in terms of the problems that a man can fix. Uh, right at the outset, I would like to thank Terumo and uh, uh, Amit Garg and Dr. Abhishek for uh, the kind introduction and organizing this uh, webinar. It's a good learning platform and I'm sure a lot of people will definitely appreciate and learn from this, uh, our small experience in the management of benign prostatic hyperplasia with the help of prostatic artery embolization. As Dr. Garg mentioned, this uh, procedure is uh, relatively new, but uh, uh, we would like to discuss what we exactly do and what are the results of, uh, of prostatic artery uh, embolization. Now, as Dr. Abhishek uh, was inquiring, what is, this, uh, uh, what is this benign hypertrophy of the uh, prostate? Well, uh, we know prostate is a gland which is located uh, below the bladder in male patients. And this gland actually secretes uh, 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 seminal fluid, which is a kind of nutrient for the sperms. Now, this gland, as the age advances, tends to hypertrophy. And uh, this is a benign enlargement of the prostate. And what happens is, as it enlarges, it compresses on the urethra. Urethra is a part of the passage from the bladder to the end of the penis where you can pass the urine and this gets compressed and causes all the uh, uh, symptoms related to the bladder and accumulation of the urine in the uh, in the bladder so benign prostatic enlargement is basically compression of the urethra and the pressure symptoms in the bladder next please yes abhishek Basically, the no. uh, incidence uh, of uh, uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, quite high. If you look at this particular arrow here, by the time a male patient is about 50 years of age, 50% of the patient will add benign uh, prostatic hypertrophy. And by the age of 80, 90% of them would have these symptoms. And basically, the symptoms in uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia are called lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTs. Now, there are two types of symptoms. One is a storage. As the urine gets accumulated in the bladder, it is an irritation which happens, which leads to frequency. So the patient keeps on going to the, uh, to the toilet more frequently. There would be urgency. There would be urge incontinence. That means before the patient reaches the, uh, the toilet, he may just pass urine. And these symptoms are more common during the night time. So you can imagine his lifestyle gets totally deranged and uh, the quality of life reduces. There are voiding symptoms. That means while passing the urine, there would be outlet obstruction because the urethra is now compressed and uh, it causes weak stream. There could be hesitancy. Patient tries to pass urine, does not pass and then again starts. Uh, there would be straining that is necessary. There would be dribbling and there will be overflow incontinence. That means the bladder will be full and suddenly the patient starts passing urine and that could really wet his pants and that could be quite embarrassing. There's, because of the urinary uh, retention, there's a high incidence of urinary infection in these patients. Yes, Abhishek? Uh, thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us with what are the common symptoms that these patients face. Can you throw some light on how this disease is diagnosed and how a doctor should uh, evaluate such a patient? Yes, uh, see, as I said, the symptoms are quite specific for bladder outlet obstruction and prostate. Um, but you need to diagnose it 
primarily ultrasonography and transrectal sonography is a, a good method it gives you the enlargement of the prostate as you can see that you can see the changes in the bladder if you want to see and most important in these patients we do voiding post voiding uh, ultrasonography and in that you will see there's excessive amount of urine which is retained the enlarged prostate can be easily measured what is the quantity of the bladder or the the volume of the of the prostate that is there and uh, that can be done on ultrasonography the uroflowmetry is is more of a dynamic test is taken when the patient passes you passes urine and there are various parameters that we evaluate that is how is the flow how much is the residual urine all that can be calculated dynamically on uroflowmetry this is a good investigation to be done before uh, any surgery or any procedure and afterwards also and it gives you a good prognostic value how uh, how the improvement has taken place the blood tests are also done and very important that you should do a psa that is prostate sensitive antigen which will also try and rule out the if there is underlying infection or underlying uh, uh, cancer in these patients if you are contemplating a uh, prostatic artery embolization then mri of the prostate or a ct with ct angiography to assess the prostatic arterial anatomy is very important so these are some of the diagnostic tests that are necessary and radiology plays a very important role with uroflowmetry yes and such so that will such patients such, uh, should be go about it sir what are the common conditions that can mimic this particular condition and yes so uh, as i said uh, with all those symptoms that we spoke condition. about yes so we need to rule out prostatic cancer because uh, at least when we are doing uh, embolization procedure uh, the cancer should be ruled out in these patients because the cancer requires pure surgery if there is a bladder stricture there again could be a poor stream and uh, uh, symptoms uh, something related to the poor stream even there is a bladder uh, dysfunction again patient can have hesitancy and frequency neurological abnormality again can mimic uh, a, a benign prostatic hypertrophy and there are certain drugs which uh, can also cause symptoms related to the bladder and these have to be ruled out before you can take up these patients for any procedure yes uh, thank you sir so now we know that what this problem is and what are the symptoms sir so what are the various treatment options that are available for these patients yeah so the uh, symptoms uh, one of the common symptom as i said are mainly lifestyle modifications in these patients and when you look at the treatment options in these patients we should actually change his lifestyle we should ask him not to take fluids during night time which will prevent him to go to the toilet more frequently at night and lose his sleep we should also treat and teach him to do some pelvic floor exercises and cut down on alcohol spicy food and if there is some amount of constipation we should treat his constipation and certain uh, fat, fatty acids and seeds could also help in these patients so these are some of the lifestyle modification that needs to be done but equally important are the drug therapies these drugs are primarily targeted towards uh, shrinking the size of the prostate and also relaxing the prostate uh, the muscles in the prostate so that now there is enough flow and the symptoms would reduce in these patients the standard of care obviously uh, what we have all understood over the years is a surgery and in surgery one of the best methods that is described is a TURP transurethral resection of prostate where they either use a laser or an ultrasound probe and as you can see that this is a, a scope which has been introduced and a laser probe is introduced here with the help of the uh, thermal or laser you cut the prostate and widen the lumen which improves the flow of urine uh, through the urethra but now there is the latest method that we want to discuss today is what is called the prostatic artery embolization wherein we do an angiography of the prostatic artery and get the catheter down into the pro into the prostatic artery we inject embolic agents there as you can see that these are particulate material which goes into the bed of the prostate now these prostatic benign hypertrophies are very vascular 
and as you inject this particulate material they will get deposited and would reduce the vascularity and shrink the prostate so the latest minimally invasive procedure is a prostatic artery embolization yes abhishek wow sir that's really exciting so can you tell us more about this new modality that is available now the prostatic artery embolization also yes please highlight the risk yes, of uh, pr first sir perfect see the 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 uh, trp as i said is a, a, a well uh, method which has been done over the years but uh, it is very effective but most important is that there are a lot of complications or risk will be involved with that you have the retrograde ejaculation as you can see that the ejaculation material will go back into the bladder there is erectile dysfunction there is finter injury and incontinence quite a few patients develop dribbling following the procedure bleeding is a common uh, uh, pro problem as you are cutting through a hypervascular area you can get lot of bleeding and there is definite need for catheterization in these patients uh, to see that the bladder is cleaned up and flushed with saline post procedure a so lot of patients are unable to void infection is also seen in about 2.3% of the patients and as i said some patient may require prolonged urinary catheter and having that catheter could be a lifestyle altering and a very uh, uh, you know very traumatic to the patients the hospitalization stay could be quite long in these patients as far as the prostatic artery embolization procedure is concerned this is minimally invasive we come from the radial or the or the femoral approach and get into the prostatic artery you can see that the this uh, diagram is showing the catheter in the prostatic artery and then we inject these small microspheres which go and get deposited into the prostatic bed now these prostatic hypertrophy uh, uh, tumors are loaded with blood vessels and once we block these blood vessels the prostate tends to shrink because of ischemic necrosis and once the prostate shrinks the the bladder uh, the the urethra opens up and the urinary flow improves and the bladder symptoms reduce in these patients yes uh, abhishek yes sir sir please throw what could be the ideal indications for this prostatic artery embolization and which patients are not suitable for such procedures yes so it is very important that you select your patients very well before doing this procedure now the symptoms that are there are basically uh, you should have these lower urinary tract symptoms which should be moderate or severe mild you can give them uh, medical therapy and that should be okay but if you have given a medical therapy and it has failed or it is uh, patient is not suitable for surgery quite a few patients are not willing for this surgery and nowadays we are finding more and more patients are not willing for this surgery because they realize it that there could be a lot of complications in this the size of the prostate on ultrasonography should be at least 40 cc or more there is a, a, a symptomatic score that we do in these patients and if the international prostatic symptomatic score is 13 to 18 that means these are patients suitable for an embolization procedure we also do another question here called quality of life questionnaire and in this if it is equal to or more than 3 then again these patients are suitable for that Euroflow metry, as I said, is a dynamic study. It's a very good uh, uh, study. If you see uh, the the urine rate dropping by more than twelve to fifteen mL per second, again these are good candidates, and they will definitely benefit with prostatic artery embolization. The two major conditions which we should exclude before doing prostatic artery embolization is infection and malignancy. As I said, requires. uh definite surgery if there is infection we start them on antibiotics for a 4 to 6 weeks and once the infection settles one can take up this patient for prostatic artery embolization yes thank you sir so that more or less highlights the indications and what are the patients that would be ideally suitable for this particular procedure and what are the patients which we would not want to uh, do this procedure for as you highlighted sir can you show a case so that you have done and to and to show the benefit how this procedure actually benefits the patient
uh, am i audible sir so uh, thank you sir yes sir so also sir yes sir so uh, also highlight the yeah. techniques uh, how we go about it and which is the ideal suited technique for these patients sir yes so uh, basically as i said this is a trans arterial uh, embolization of the prostate now what we do is we puncture either from the radial approach or we puncture from the femoral approach the idea is that the prostatic arteries are from the internal iliac artery so these are the internal iliac artery and the prostatic artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery we come either from the radial approach across into the descending thor or abdominal aorta and get into each one of these prostatic artery the advantage of a radial artery approach is that the bilateral catheterization is very convenient and possible to do it in these patients it is easy to negotiate the micro catheter and wire it is very important that you can go deep down into the prostatic artery and then embolize it and most important with the radial approach is that since it's in the arm this patient can then walk up and go to the toilet and there is no need to put a foley's catheter uh, as against that when you take a femoral approach we immobilize the patient because if the patient starts moving from a femoral approach side there could be a risk of bleeding in these patients so therefore radial artery approach is preferred in these patients and now very easily done because all the catheters and now suitable wires and catheters are available to attend to these prostatic artery embolization yes so sir also throw some uh, throw some knowledge in terms of what are the actual advantages of this particular modality of treatment over other treatment options yes so uh, being um, a, a, a trans arterial approach it is minimally invasive it is done under local anesthesia we puncture the radial or the femoral artery there is no need for any cut or any suture this is just a needle puncture technique that we use we take a catheter and introduce all the way into the prostatic artery and once we are in the prostatic artery we inject these embolic agent to block the blood supply which reduces the size of the benign uh, tumor these are less complicated these are better tolerated by the patient the results are equally good and the hospitalization is short so these are the treatment modalities which are now preferred by these patients it is very important to make these patients aware of this therapy and uh, make them aware and then that becomes very suitable for the patients yes abhishek thank you sir sir can you also throw some light on the investigation that these patients are uh, pre posterior ct in what common complications these patients may have yes so uh, when i show my case i will show you the uh, role of the ct scan in these patients but it's very important that <coughs> any procedure has its own uh, own uh, numbers of complication that we need to uh, you know, to be care, uh, aware of now the major complications are mainly non target embolization that means if you have gone into the artery and there are embolic agents which go into the artery to the bladder this one of the branches of the bladder or to the rectum or to the penis you can imagine that these particles will block those branches also and patient can have symptoms related to ischemia of the bladder rectum or penis so it's very important that the radiologist guides his catheter very selectively into the prostatic artery there are minor complication that once you have embolized it some patient can get uh, urinary uh, dysuria very rarely there could be hematuria and hematospermia these are self limiting and within 24 to 48 hours these symptoms would go down and there would be not any necessary to put a foley's catheter or even give any medication to these patients normally in these patients we give uh, antibiotic cover and some pain management and that should be more than enough to take care of these symptoms i will now try and show you this case uh, which will highlight what uh, how we uh, how we do these procedures so this is a 61 year old male patients he had grade 3 prostatomegaly with uh, the prostate size of uh, 48 grams and this ultrasound shows a bladder here full bladder and this is a prostate the size you can see that it is 48.4 ml and uh, this is the 
uh, transverse section here, you can see the prostate extending here. And you can imagine the urethra would have gone through the prostate and is blocked and there is distension of the bladder. This is the CT scan. This is a plain CT just now. You can see the prostate over there in this patient. The important thing was the post void residual urine was 70 ml, which is a large quantity. The PSA was 6.8. This patient was given antibiotic and then taken up for the procedure. The urine routine and microscopy then was normal and taken up for the procedure. We also do the renal function and see that the creatinine is normal in this patient. This is the Euroflowmetry of this patient and what it shows that there is a no normal compliance capacity of the bladder. That means the bladder is very good and it is compliant. It can actually contract and expand very well. There is no unstable contraction in these patients. The, there is a high pressure which shows that there is an obstruction and you can see that the flow was very low. Now these are the graphs which confirm that. that there is an obstruction which is taking place. The urinary contraction is very good and normal. And the Qmax, that is the amount of flow, is markedly reduced, which says that there is an outlet obstruction in the bladder. This is the CT angiography, which is very vital to do a CT angiography in this patient for two things. Number one, it will show the vascularity of the tumor or in the bladder or in the, in the prostate here. And it will also give the arterial mapping of the pelvic uh, arteries as you can see that and this is the branch which is the branch which is supplying the prostate here on both the sides here this is the one here as you can see that it is important for me to know where to actually go and cannulate this prostatic artery and this is the prostatic artery going towards the prostate and you can see some increased vascularity in the region of the prostatic bed when I did the angiogram, here yes, you can see the catheter all the way into the uh, anterior division of the of the internal iliac artery, and this is a prostatic artery here. We have gone super selectively with a micro catheter, which is a 2.7 French micro catheter. This is a vascularity in the prostatic bed. At the time of doing the uh, angiography, we do what is known as a dynamic CT angiography on table. You can see that the enlarged prostate and vascularity there. This is the branch which would have gone distally and would have caused non-target embolization. We went selectively into this branch and there once we injected the uh, polyvinyl alcohol particles, these are small micro particles which go inside and obliterate these branches and post embolization the vascularity is markedly reduced and here you can see that the artery, the remaining branches are well seen but the prosthetic bed is totally avascular and there is no supply of blood to that territory. This was on the left side. We did a similar thing on the right side here. You can see that my catheter has come into the prosthetic bed. This is the vascularity. You can see how vascular is the prosthetic bed. After embolization, the vascularity is reduced. This is the, the, uh, the radio pick particles and contrast which is retained within the right side of the prostate and once this was done the whole procedure was now complete it took us about 45 minutes to do the procedure yes abhishek and uh, how well this procedure is in the light for such patients and uh, you showed beautifully through your case how this patient benefited and actually offering a non-invasive uh, method. Can you also uh, show some data in terms of head to head comparison of surgical TURP versus prosthetic RT embolization? Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are a whole lot of uh, literature data available now, but this is one that I have shown up here. As you can see that this was a randomized control trial and they took 57 patients who had undergone TURP an equal number of patients who had undergone prosthetic artery embolization. Now, as you see that urinary catheter catheterization was more required in TURP patients, whereas in PAE, very few patients required urinary catheter. And this is very important because you, any uh, introduction of catheter is not really acceptable by the patient. And there is definitely risk of infection if you put a catheter. Also, if you can see that the stay, the number of days that the patient had to stay in the hospital was much more with TURP as again that in PAE it was less. 
in my case the patient was sent back uh, the next day however uh, if you look at the international data they talk of six to eight hours of stay post artery embolization especially if you have done it from the radial artery approach the ipss score the quality of life and the uh, qmax or that is the urinary flow more or less were equal in both the both the sides both trp and pae so you can see that pae is non inferior to tr turp so more or less the same but the point is that there is no need for urinary catheter and stay in these patients what is equally important is to understand that the complications of uh, of uh, uh, turp are much more and complication of pae done very well the the complication rates are very less the chance of infection chance of bleeding uh, urinary symptoms dribbling stricture formation everything is much less with pae and therefore it is now more acceptable by the patients so you can see that if i have to conclude thank you sir uh, the so that actually PAE is same as to urp yes Yes, Abhishek. So, yeah. So the efficacy of PA is the same as TURP, but it is much safer right. and therefore more acceptable by the patients. Thank you very much, Abhishek. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for beautifully elucidating the whole issue. I think we have lost Dr. Abhishek for the moment. So. Dr. Vimal, we have two, three questions. Can I we take them? Conclude this also. Yes. So I, I think it's very important to realize that the uh, newer method that has come in, that is prostatic artery embolization, uh, is minimally invasive. Uh, if you do it from the radial approach, the stay in the hospital hospital is uh, is reduced. Uh, the overall uh, the efficacy of the procedure. is as good as qrp and uh, what is important is that the complication rates are much less and therefore i think it is high time that the patient should realize this and start uh, asking for this kind of an option when they go to their urologist uh, with uh, symptoms and signs of um, prostatic artery uh, prostatic artery trophy thank you thank you so much dr vimal we have two three questions can we just take them very simple and small yes, questions yes please okay uh, so dr ajay has asked what is the approximate cost of this procedure i mean it can be a range yeah. yes so uh, 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 the if the patient is in a average classroom we call it the twin sharing room the cost should be about 2.5 lakh rupees for this patient Okay. And uh, another is how long does the effect last of PAE? So the, there is there are enough data now available wherein uh, short term and a medium term range uh, the the benefit of or the efficacy of prostatic artery embolization has been proven and uh, patient can remain symptom free at least for three to four years that the data has been collected. the long term study is still going on and i think another couple of years we will come to know what is the outcome in about 10 years now this procedure has been started around 2010 that we started doing this procedure worldwide and as the data got collected it's around 2013 14 that we got the data coming out so 5 and 7 year outcomes will be understood uh, once these data come out but short term mid mid term data is very good with this therapy therapy but okay. another point is that you because uh, even after a particular set of time uh, this procedure is easily repeatable because it it has got no uh, big surgery no cut so you can always repeat it go back in again and do it maybe after a few years also if required yes and that's thank a major you. benefit that we have yes thank you for adding that point and one from dr ravi is i think you briefly touched already but what is the effect on sexual function or erectile function post pae so for post pae uh, we do not observe these uh, sexual dysfunctions 
uh, in these patients. The main problem is some irritation of the bladder or something. And if you have obviously not a non-target embolization, there would be issue. But there is no uh, retrograde uh, ejaculation or any erectile dysfunction, which you would normally see with uh, the surgical procedures. Right. And actually, that's one of the major benefits, uh, as Vimal sir has highlighted. And I think that's what uh, the major uh, reason for this procedure to be becoming popular is. Correct. So these were the three questions. Let me just quickly check. So, uh, yes, Dr. Vimal, I think these were the questions. I think I did not miss any. Okay. So, Dr. Vishek? Over yes. to you, if you uh, wish, we yes. can close. Uh, so yes. So in conclude, I would just uh, highlight what Dr. Vimal said. It is so something that doesn't require any cut, uh, no suture, uh, done under local anesthesia, just a small needle, and it is something that the future is uh, telling us that this will be the future, and the patients would benefit. Mainly, it, it's all about the patient care, and what all best we can offer to the patient. Uh, so, uh, uh, another request would be that uh, all doctors should be aware of this particular treatment. That's an option for their patients, uh, and it, it's being done very rampantly. Even started, as Dr. Vimal said, started worldwide from 2010, and now being done very frequently in our country at majority of the centers that have interventional radiological setups. Uh, it, it was an honor for me to actually host Dr. Vimal, and uh, thanks again to the Teramo company uh, for. Uh, taking this public awareness initiative and uh, helping us uh, create uh, awareness about this particular treatment option for a very common problem that almost all male undergoes through his life. Thank you so much, Dr. Vishek, and thank you so much, Dr. Vimal. For, for the benefit of the audience, this session will be uh, is being recorded like John mentioned in the beginning and will be posted also on www.terumoindiaskillife.com a cleaner version and we'll also try and post the uh, uh, questions and answers with that we really appreciate your time your effort and in disseminating this important piece of information to all of our uh, gps and cps and all of our fellow doctors thank you so much dr vimal once again thank you so much dr bishek and thank you john uh, uh, everybody thank you. thank you so much for attending and please have a great rest of the evening